quench yourself, Father, before departing with the waters of the Salvian Springs. Thank you, brother. Father, may I ask you something? My name is Curtius. I work in a market unloading goods. Now and then there is somebody, friend, or maybe somebody I hardly know. Anyway, they ask me what it means to be a Christian. <laughs> What the rules are, how many there are, what they have to do. I, I never know what to answer them. Do not kill, do not steal, do not commit adultery. The rules, as you say, could be numerous. But all the commandments can be summed up in one. Love thy neighbor as thyself. If they ask you, give them that answer. Thank you, Father. This boy you see here, is almost six, but he cannot talk nor move about well. My wife and I have prayed that he be cured, but we have lost all hope. Why must our boy languish like this? What have we done, Father, that we be punished so? I can suffer your sorrow with you, but I, perhaps I can't console you. You know, as I was listening to you, I was thinking of, of something connected with my job as a, I was a weaver. And I still am. I weave and knot threads on the loom. Well, now, if you look at a cloth from one side, everything seems tangled, incomprehensible. But when you turn it over on the other side, all those knots and splices, all that confusion of colors is suddenly a perfect pattern. Our life is very much like that cloth. Love, you said, is the first commandment. Yes, and I maintain it. Is it the same love that binds a man with a woman, or a different love? Love is all one. At the close of our life, we'll be questioned about this love. All of us will be asked if we were capable of loving. But Father, can we truly love someone who doesn't believe in what we believe? I have asked myself this, as I ask you now. She is high! Load up! Move it! Form. Did you say you wanted to resume active service? Yes, I've made up my mind. Well, you know Tegelinus. Speak to him, and you could be assigned to the Praetorians. No, I don't want to stay in Rome. I'll be a soldier again and go to the front. He who wants to go a long way off is not interested in fighting, but forgetting. son of Mars, I inquired of my own initiative. I swear. You'll be pleased to know that the girl has been asking for news of you. And I'm not charging you anything for this. I just like a little compensation for the time I've been spending, eh? No one told you to do it. It isn't that easy to follow a woman with a proper caution, especially a woman like that. I have to rely on other people at a certain personal sacrifice, all of them quite trustworthy, however. It's easier to follow an adulteress. At least you know where she's going and what she plans to do. <laughs> but this woman of yours, there's never any telling where she's going to go, who she's going to meet, what she may do. One day she seems carefree, and she goes to play with children in a courtyard. Ah, oh, but then I've seen her leaping wildly and turn cartwheels and somersaults and nim. And then another day, she slips along the walls, the alleyways, the most deserted corridors of buildings, secret encounters, meetings, threats to the Empire, perhaps. I don't have the means to discover anything, to pay, Look, to have I'm somebody not going gain to pay her confidence. Him. I'm not the one who's going to give you those means. Yes, and why does she spend so much time in the houses of the sick and dying, huh? What does she want? Is it that she's serving Karen with bodies? <laughs> or is she trying to have herself mentioned in people's wills, eh? I could find out other things, and I've seen other things. Listen to me, Marcus, if you could give me a little money. Soldier. Sir. Have this man arrested. Lock him in a cell and keep him there. 
Until he learns that I have no longer need for his services. Yes, sir. I've learned, I've learned, and I won't bother you again. Forgive me. But you must remember I'm always here at your command and for a most miserable wage, whenever you want. <laughs> What do you want? Nero is in training. You know you're not supposed to be here. The Emperor wants it kept secret. What I have to tell you can't wait. It's too important to Gelinus. Speak up then, Velusius, before the Emperor asks me who you are. You'll have to tell him. It's a conspiracy. My name is Velusius Proculus, a humble commander of a trireme... Yes, 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 yes. ...of the Missinum fleet. I know. I escorted your ship in the Gulf of Bile several times. Well then, Velusius Proculus. Give me the names of the conspirators. Epicurus didn't tell them to me. She doesn't trust me that much. Who is Epicurus? A courtesan. It's an honor for me to receive such great men in my house. Ah, but the greatest among men has yet to come, my dear. A challenge not above your beauty. You needn't doubt, Venus Rufus. Nero, Emperor of Rome. You must be the famous Epicurus, yes? Lovely place, perfumes, silks, very classic, refined, exciting. You did wrong not to let me meet her before. And yet, you know that I'm a great patron of brothels. Oh, all this luxury makes a customer feel uneasy, no? Hmm? But not for one Caesar who is by nature. <laughs> not for one who is instinctively of good taste and manly. No, 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 not necessarily. There have been always uh, 
Stories about virile men, huh? And faced with a beautiful woman, they lose their power. Hmm? Trial and error, experimentation. That is what the Greek empiricists advise. Experience unveils the truth. We have everything we need. A man. And this too beautiful, rare, and available of Picarus. All we're missing is the bed. Where is it? Your beauty, Epicurus, has a very strange conspiratorial glow to it. Perhaps because every conspiracy, it would seem, has a woman to blind the conspirators and make them froth at each other. Caesar, for example. Don't tell me there weren't women to foment those who conspired against Caesar. Brutus's hatred was very much like a woman's. Wasn't it, Epicurus? And Augustus, Augustus too. Oh, I know they say he died of illness. But how many women did he have around him, and how many women of his family hated him? And Tiberius? Why was it that Macronus shortened his agony and hastened his death? It was owing to the feminine urgency to rule that Caligula had. Caligula, now his death is certainly a grand conspiracy with passwords and daggers and the innate effeminacy of a man, Cassius Career. But why must I talk to you of such things? You look so, so tense. Don't be afraid, Epicurus. No one's accusing you. You're one who merely grazes the great men of Rome in a bed. History will not remember you, even though you may have great talents. You are hopelessly relegated to oblivion shall always be on the outside. Must we sit here, Tigellinus? Not if you wish to go, no. But uh, I must stay on. What? Huh? I'll have to arrest her afterwards. She'll talk. You're under arrest, accused of conspiracy. Against whom? Death is something I could not want for anyone. For Lucius Proculus, one of your lovers, accuses you of being part of a conspiracy. You yourself told him as much! What sort of lover would I be if in my bed I talked to men about conspiracies and death? And what sort of conspirator would I be if I confided in a man who betrays the very woman he says he loves? This woman is to remain here, under house arrest. <laughs>
Look, Caius Calpurnius Piso, the wealth and the plentifulness that is bestowed upon this house by the goddess Ceres. Let your generosity be as great. Two thirds to the owner, one third to the workers. Plus an extra bushel to each. And an extra one for a woman with child. Wine! More wine! Come. Let them have their fill. You are very generous with your slaves. I find it a good policy. Ah, Phineas Rufus. I heard a fire broke out at Rome. Yes. Anything serious? Just a fire. But that isn't the reason why I'm here. She defended herself admirably. A picaris won't talk. I'd say she'd rather die first. Oh, come now, Rufus. She's a courtesan, saving herself as a way of life. You were there. That means they don't suspect you. Don't suspect us. How can we be sure? If one of us is present, they can spy on us all the more. I say a picarus will talk, Piso. What could she possibly say? Our names, every last one of us. They are not proof. I can help you, Epicurus. I, I save you. I don't regret what I did. I want her to be able to look back and know that I had done something worthwhile. Nothing can be that worthwhile if it costs you your life. They ask that you make me talk. No, you must believe me. I don't know who accused you, but they'll make you talk. And if necessary, torture you. There she is. Bind her hands and take her to the Mamertine prison. Why do you follow me? We're foreigners. Well, so am I. I'm a foreigner too, but I don't set the city on fire. Why? Why?
stifling in here, stifling. Rome has always been an impossible city in the summer. Stinking sewers, sweaty people, constant fires. Smoke ruins my voice. <coughs> you writing? Mm -hmm. Let it burn, yes. A desert of ashes. Fire purifies. It cleanses and destroys all evil. Let it all burn. And we begin again like Romulus from nothing. I will create a new city. Beautiful, spacious. I will call it, write it down, <coughs> Neropolis. Oh, Tigellinus, is the fire threatening my house? Not yet. But if we let it go too far, we'll have to destroy all the houses between the Oppian Hill and the Calion. Of course you want to stop the fire tonight so that tomorrow you can buy the ruins for nothing, eh? And the people will say that to save my house, I destroyed theirs. No, no, I do not want to miss this chance. On the contrary, I must seek out the people, rush to their assistance. They'll love me. And with this misfortune, they'll love me even more. They will have gifts, aid, comfort from their emperor. <laughs> I will go out this very night. Call my acting teacher. What are my orders? Do your duty. Do your duty. <laughs> Do your duty, Chichena. thinking of going out. It's hardly the moment. Dear? I shall not bow to your plebeians. Where are you going, then? And to do what? Hmm? You are a very bad actor, Nero, when you are caught without an audience. You know perfectly well where I'm going. If the fire spreads any It further, will reach your son, Rufius. Yes, I know. As if he didn't have enough relatives to worry about him. He has a whole family. A family that isn't yours any longer. He is still mine. He is still my son. And your two divorced husbands. Are they still your husbands? Hmm? What are you saying? It's as if you've never been a father. It's as if you never... You don't know what it is to lose a daughter. You will not go out tonight. I forbid it. You may send a Praetorian to look after his safety. This fire has been a gift of the gods. I will be able to create a new city and all my enemies, I will find out who they are. All my enemies will have the people of Rome against them. 
Do you believe in me? You don't? Lacte. Oh, yes. Down! Down! Out! How do those help me? Get down! No! We won't come this far! Tigellinus! Must you burn them all? Tigellinus! These houses are tinder for the fire. We have to demolish them to block the flames. No, wait! I'm willing to pay! It's too late. And you yell too much. To stave off a fire's appetite, you have to deny it food. Who is paying you to spy tonight, Kylo Kilonides? I have no master but you, Tegelinus. I live in your shadow. <laughs> There's never been a fire quite like this one before. You'd think a poet had divined it, had, had built it, conceived and ignited it. What a strange night. Do you think this could really be only a fire of the usual kind, or is it the monstrous idea of a god, or of a man, or men? Stop talking like that. Your words are not likely to be carved in marble. Do you know anything? Have you heard something? No more room. You can't enter the house of the nobles. Camius. Petronius said to let them through. They're welcome in this house. Come, come. many, my lord, and they ask to be fed. Seems perfectly natural to me. Give each of them a measure of flour and a jug of water. We'll have to unlock the larder. There isn't enough flour for all of them. Tell Eunice to come here. Here, Eunice. You take care of things. No, not I. Only the mistress of the house who should have the keys to the larder. Yes, it's the ancient tradition. But it doesn't take into account fires or households without a mistress. You may take her place for tonight. Purifying flames announce the coming of the judge. The resurrection of souls is at hand. Pray and prostrate yourselves. The purifying flames announce the coming of the judge. The destruction of Babylon is the glory of the children of God. Rome shall burn and the earth will open up and give out the dead and Christ will appear on a cloud. The judge, our judge, eternal and forgiving, he who sees in the heart of every one of us 
prostrate yourselves and wail for mercy, because your time is near. Let me hear rage. Anger. Anger. And now, cruelty. Excellent. I hear the muse. It's raspy inside me. I've composed a heartfelt poem. About? About my grief. By all means. Really? Want to hear it? Certainly. I'm ready. Begin. Cradle of my fathers! The foot, please. Left the foot the back. Arms lowered, never above the head. Go on. Cradle of my fathers. Have a cra... Uh, holy city, you bear the eternal weight of... Uh, uh, not good. No, not good. Once more. Cradle of my fathers. Beloved cradle. Uh, holy city, you bear the eternal weight of history and of empire. Struck by divine fury. You are seeking for a god to save you and to protect you. Oh, cradle of my fathers, beloved cradle, you bear the eternal weight of history and empire. Now, struck by divine fury, you seek a god who will save you, protect you, Love you. close? This is what. Keep it wrapped around you. No! No, not through here! Everything's burning! Houses are falling! Go back! Go back! Do not despair. Christ is close to those who suffer. Christ is close to those who suffer. Close to those who suffer? I see her. Come. Where? Easy. Easy. Elijah. No. It's not her. Rome is dead. Everything is finished. The wells are poisoned. The aqueducts carry vipers. Flower breeds worms. We are dying. Nero is burying us all. Nero contaminates us with hemlock and toad's blood. Nero is the fall of Rome.
I baptize you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I baptize you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I baptize you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, let not thy wrath fall upon us. Protect our children, lest they die before their time. I baptize you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I suffer for you, my people. I will open the Imperial Gardens for you. The water of the fountains will quench your thirst. Aid to all survivors. My granaries will be open to one and all. The Emperor is generous. The Emperor loves you. The Emperor is generous. The Emperor loves you. The Emperor loves you. The Emperor loves you. The Emperor loves you. You see, the people worship me. A lesson to those who conspire against me. The love of the people protect my life. From Caius Calpurnius Piso. Senator Piso shares your suffering. Two measures of grain to every family. There is enough for all. Noble Piso shares the grain of his land with all. It was Nero who killed me. All his anger. I am burning. Nero has set me on fire with the flame of the Vestals. I can't drink. Nero has poisoned the wells. Nero has destroyed Rome. He has killed us all. We should have killed Nero instead of wasting all our time talking. Hmm. Because of our indecision, Epicurus is dead. Yes, she died for nothing. Not necessarily. It depends on us. Hear that woman? That woman's words must become everybody's wish. Nero is our enemy. May he be damned. Rome must accuse Nero. Can you call yourselves architects? More spacious, broader. I said I wanted the streets wide and the houses low. 
with porticos to shelter us from the cold in winter and from the heat in summer. Bayon, take note. I order that all vessels coming up the Tiber with grain must leave with a load of rubble on their way back. They can unload it whenever they please. That's their business. We must clear things away so that construction can begin. And, and remember, no common wars. Each house has to stand by itself. Nero's row must have no cause to fear another fire. Fate allows us to rebuild a city that has already won its place in history. <laughs> it's, a, it's a unique opportunity. <sighs> Popeye! Rufius! Rufius! Welcome to this house. Your name is Rufius, is it not? Yes, he's a Rufius. You look like your father. You haven't been very lucky with your children, Popea. Look at this one, the living image of your first husband, pale and colorless, like a sprig growing in the dark. And then the gods stole our little girl from us. Do you recall the location of your family's house? Rufius, show me. Come, show me. Tell me where it was. Well? I don't know. <laughs> you don't, and yet it's all so clear. The Esquiline. The Palatine. The Quirinal. Hmm? Look here. My feet are now in the Tiber. <laughs> it takes a little imagination, that's all. You can learn from me. I also grew up in the house of a man who was not my father. His name is Legius, a stableman. He lost his son in the fire. He was standing in line with other people in the forum to collect the grain ration. Then all of a sudden, he started yelling, ranting against you. I had him immediately arrested. Legius. Tell me. Exactly what you said about me. Go on, talk. Tigellina says that you publicly accused me of having ordered the burning of Rome. Is that true, Leeches? Oh, I don't care if you call me an arsonist. I don't care if you say I burned Rome. Could be true. <laughs> Perhaps it's true. Let's say it's true. What hurts me most is not having gained the people's love. Had my subjects loved me, they would have said, if Nero set fire to Rome, he had good reason. Instead, you, Legis, curse my name and all the others are out to kill me. Fata opens your eyes. Saski opens your mouth. Isis <clears throat> the doors of your mind. Caesar, have you opened the portals of your mind? Yes. The flow of your thought is coming through. It is clear. There are signs of hatred, Caesar. Evil people that wish you ill. What is this? A finger. No. A sword. It is a sword. See how sharp it is. The sword cuts out the malignant thoughts planted in your mind and leads them down into your mouth. Spit them out. The evil thought. Spit it out. Let it come out from your mouth, Caesar. <laughs> I have to free myself from those who would hate me. Rome calls me an arsonist. <laughs> Hearts ask for vengeance, and vengeance demands victims. <laughs> A perfect verse. <laughs> Write it down, someone, before it's lost. You've been planning your voyage to Greece and Egypt for some time, Nero. 
Perhaps now is the moment to leave. Remembering that departures are easy, whereas coming back is not. It's true. Petronius, you're wrong. Leaving now would be an act of guilt. Not necessarily. I was thinking more in terms of a festive departure rather than an escape. Go on. A great procession mm -hmm. with legions of soldiers lining the roads, drums, flowers. Mm -hmm. Things that please, but above all, that distract the populace. It's too hot for travel. That is true. And the heat ruins my voice. Besides, I have a better idea. Why don't we say it was Scivolus who set the city on fire. I, Caesar? And we will abandon him to the fury of the mob. But Caesar, huh? I'm no one. Killing me wouldn't appease them. True. We need a more important figure. What about Sylvanius? Oh, huh? I, I, I'm much too fat, Caesar. Uh, and fat only kindles fires. <laughs> I could say you started the fire, Tigellinus. But I'm head of the Praetorians. You? Nobody would believe it. Hearts ask for vengeance. And vengeance, alas, demands victims. <laughs> Hearts seek vengeance, and vengeance finds victims. Hearts ask for vengeance, and vengeance demands victims! All underground. Like a secret city. A city carved from underneath our own. Dark, foreboding, like, like a city of the dead. Because these people aren't afraid of death. Actually, they're waiting for it. They say it's the gateway to the true life. Isn't that monstrous? It's almost inhuman. You see, O oh noble defender of our city, this is where they meet to perform their foul rituals. This is where they pray for the downfall of Rome. If you wait till they gather here, you will catch them all in a single night. You should hear their talk. O oh, beloved son of Mars, they pretend to be humble, resigned. Always ready to forgive, but on the contrary, they harbor a mad desire for power. And the wretches are prepared to do anything, but for the glory of this world, not for the next, as they say. Like you, Kylo. Very well. But I don't hide behind the vague promises of a crucified god. My god is Kylo! Tegelinus. Tegelinus. Where are you? Where are you? I'm over here. I, I... Where did... Tigellinus! <gasps> I'm here, Kylo. What are you afraid of? For a moment I, I had lost. It's as if I were suddenly... Your life now has changed. You will kneel before the Emperor. You will thank me, Kylo Kelonides. Oh. Be worthy of this day. Oh. Oh. Hail, monarch of monarchs, king of kings. O oh, hail, prime mover of the earth, lion among men, sovereign of the people, ruler of the world. Hail to thee. So you're Kylo Kalamides? Your great admirer, O oh Caesar. And for all it's worth, a humble stoic. I do not like stoics. They love poverty and self-denial. I'm a stoic out of necessity. Give me the opportunity, O oh, radiant ruler. <laughs> Radiant, is that what you said? <laughs> oh, yes, radiant, radiant. Give me the opportunity and I will abandon myself to earthly pleasures. I like him. He's a perfect witness, Caesar. A man who could tell us the truth. What truth have you, Kylo? Oh, divine one, will you allow me to weep? No, no, tears bore me. Yes, you're right, three times over, thrice right. Eyes that look at you must be dry. Here's what I've come to tell you, O oh, Lord of light. Beware of the Christians. 
Christians are a wretched and dangerous people. Cruelty and fire are the symbols of their rituals. Pay no attention to this man, Nero. I know him. He's one who runs a poor hostelry in the Sabura. And who augments his meager existence by selling information for a few coins. Let him speak. But how can a poor lout like this amuse an artist like Caesar? Because an artist can always learn something. The Christians, Caesar, are wretched and dangerous people. Cruelty and fire are the symbols of their ritual, hmm? <laughs> Go on, Kylo. They want the destruction of Rome, so they can transform the Empire into an orgy of death. I saw them with my own eyes, spreading fire in the streets and houses. Oh, no, Caesar, what this man is saying is absurd. I've been accused, Petronius. Believe me, I know the man. I have to defend myself. But it's all a farce. No one will believe it. You're defending the Christians, if I've understood you. No, it's not that at all. I feel you've all lost your sense of the ridiculous. I believe Tigellinus is right, this time. He did well to find this witness. And I don't see what's so farcical, as you put it. Continue, Kylo. I'm listening. I know where they hide. Where they perform their rites. I've seen their clerics sacrifice babies. Then eat the flesh and drink the blood together with their followers. Because that is what their god ordered them to do. Their god told them, take and eat, this is my body. Take and drink, this is my blood. To Gelinus, we must rid the world of these enemies of mankind. <laughs>